She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunswick, and today we are picking up where we left off last week. You are correct. This is part two of the best of 2020. Now, don't worry if you haven't listened to part one yet. That is absolutely in no way a precursor to part two. Um, But we did really break down some awesome clips from the podcast. So like go back and listen, but you can listen to this one first. I don't care. Um, So let's see what's going on in my life. So um, I'm recording this ahead of time, but in the future, I will have just gotten back with my family from our trip to Punta Cana. Oh my gosh. Hopefully. I mean, who knows? But anyways, um, so this is the fourth year that our family has done like an all-inclusive trip with our girls. I um, I love it. It, you know, it's, if I could only take one trip a year, I would choose this one because I, you know, I've admitted that I am a total workaholic and a lot of times that has me multitasking as a mom, multitasking as a wife, um, really kind of focusing on like, what's next? What do we need to do? Even on vacation, it's very like, what are the sites we need to see? What, what do we need to accomplish in order for this to be a successful trip? You know, like Disneyland, we took our family to Disneyland and like, it was great, but oh my gosh, don't take a workaholic to Disneyland or Disney World and expect them to relax. Like, whoop. Um, so I love our all-inclusive Caribbean, Mexico, Dominican trips because we don't leave. There's nothing to do except like, you know, we're there for six, seven days and it's like agenda for today, pool. Agenda for tomorrow, maybe a walk on the beach, but then pool. Um, although, okay, the vi- we, I told you we don't leave the resort except for the very first time we took our kids on vacation. Oh, I don't think I've ever told this story. If I have, I apologize. Fast forward. So the very first time that we took our kids, I believe our youngest was like three and a half and our oldest was like five and a half. And we were doing research and we discovered club meds. Club meds are amazing for family vacations. And we found a really good deal to go to Club Med Ixtapa. If you don't know your Mexico geography, that's okay. I didn't know where we were going either. So <laughs> Ixtapa is right by Zihuatanejo, which again, d- means nothing to me, um, but is on the west side of Mexico. So it's on the Pacific side, not on the Caribbean side. It was a great price. The place looked good. We go um, about three, four days in. We're like, oh, you know, like TripAdvisor says that going to see Old Town is really cool. And there's like all these shops. So we go to the front desk and we're like, okay, we want to do a trip into like Old Town to go to the shops. And they're kind of being weird. Like, oh, you don't have to do that. We bring vendors in. And I'm like thinking like, no. I want the ex- authentic Mexico experience. Like, tsh, I'm going. So um, they call us a taxi. The hotel is very weird with our taxi driver, like taking an extreme amount of information. And I'm like, whatever. So we pile in. As we're driving like the 20 minute drive from our hotel to like the downtown shopping area, we pass by like what looks like just a simple fender bender. Um... And like, you know, there's no ambulance. It's just like two cars that like had clearly kind of like mildly collided. And there is a policia there also. And there's something a little weird about this situation because on the police vehicle, it was an armored vehicle with a second level with like a, um, what's it called? Like a mounted machine gun. And there was a policia standing at behind the mounted machine gun not pointing at anyone just standing there you know on guard unless something would happen like okay so that should have been a red flag and it was a little weird so we get into old town downtown whatever and um it's really dead but like the shops are open and our taxi driver is like okay like how long do you want to shop for kirby just had a heart attack right then because listening because i guarantee you he was worried i was going to try and do Um, a Mexican accent. Don't worry, Kirby. Um, So anyway, so our taxi driver is like, how long are you going to shop for? I'm like, I don't know. 
hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. And he's like, okay, I will meet you back right here in an hour and a half. And I'm thinking this guy's just being like greedy, wanting the taxi fare. And I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. We'll grab a taxi. And he's like, no, I will meet you right here in an hour and a half. Do not get in any other taxis. And so we're just like, geez, buddy. Okay. If you, you know what? I admire that hustle. I'll, I'll, I'll get in your taxi. So we're walking around, we're shopping, our girls, you know, like Ty is three and a half, like she's wandering up ahead and like, I can always, okay, I couldn't always see her, but I always like generally knew like, oh, she's like right there looking at little purses and um, we stopped and grabbed a cerveza and so, okay, it's time to mosey back and so we get back and the taxi driver's there, um, like he's parked, he's waiting for us and we get in, okay, and we go back and um, our hotel, you know, again, like, all right, cool. This is a great experience. Our hotel, like, is all over him, like, looking at his ID and all of that stuff. And we're like, all right, cool. Peace out. Thanks for the taxi ride. So that was, like, mid-trip. So the point of this story, where it all comes together, you guys, there is a point, I promise, is um, so it's our last full day, and we're talking to another couple that had come from California, and our kids are like playing in the pool and they go like, yeah, you know, it was just such a great deal, but we almost didn't come because of the travel ban. And Kirby and I like look at each other and look at them and we go, I'm sorry, what? And they go, oh yeah, like two weeks ago, this area, so like specifically, not all of Mexico, this area, Zihuatanejo and Ixtapa became a level four travel ban, which is beyond what like, Cancun, Syria, um, a lot of like pretty terrifying countries that you would never take two little white girls to. Um, you know, you just shouldn't be taking your family anywhere regardless of their race, but you know, just very stealable. And we're like, what? Yep. So luckily it was our last day. We had a lot more anxiety taking our taxi to the airport the next day, but yeah, so it literally would have been safer for Kirby and I to take our girls to Syria than to um, Ixtapa that year. So needless to say, now we tend to stay on resort um, and we don't go to level fours. We do check travel bans. Now level threes, hey, I'm all in it. Let's, you know, let's roll the dice. But uh, level fours, I just kind of make as a general no-no to bring my family to. Whew, that was a long intro story, sorry. But I think, I think you needed to hear it. So let's do our listener highlight. This is from Dr. Rachel and it says, Aloha, I uber love your podcast and every single word that pops out of your mouth inspired by your heart and experiences. Thank you for sharing the awesomeness or your awesomeness in multiple ways. Thank you very much, Dr. Rachel, for that sweet note. I appreciate it a ton and I appreciate you listening. And um, she goes on to like talk later about how she's a seven. Oh, I identify as seven. You know that. And I know the struggle is real. So, okay, let's pray and then let's get into this. Dear God, thank you again so much for every single person that I was blessed to talk to in 2020. Thank you for every single person that listens. Even if they've only listened to one episode, I know that like you use the weird world of podcasting to connect people, to send messages. Um, there are so many people that are listening and going through who knows what they're going through when they're listening to an episode. And I believe that like you do you and just are there for them with messaging and fulfillment and love and support. And so let me constantly be reminded that I am the conduit for what you need to get to them. What they need, you have, I do not. It is why from the very first episode, I insisted on starting in prayer because as a three, I will always make it about me. Um, and I don't want that. Like, this is about the listener and what they need to hear and how I can continue to show up um, supporting and loving them through you and just helping them just feel safe and like they have somebody who gets them um, and that they can go on and be a badass. So in your name we pray, amen. 
All right, let's get party number two started. So this is episode number 48, and it ha- I have Dr. Beth Westy on. This girl, oh, she spoke so much fire. So she's got her own podcast um, that you absolutely need to go and listen to. Um, but she talks a ton about women's health and hormones. That's like what her podcast is about. Now, when we jump in, um, she is going to be talking a little bit about her story and how she got so involved in understanding how a woman's body works and hormones. And she's talking basically about how women's health in medicine is set up by men and for men. Um, She goes on in that episode to talk um, about you know, what you should be eating during your cycle, what Dutch testing is. I have a Dutch test. I'm literally looking at the unopened package right now. I still have yet to do it. Um, I think mostly because I'm really scared of like Dutch tests are really complicated and like understanding your estrogen, like, oh, it's in depth. But anyways, I'm going to do one. Um, and it, it was a fantastic, fantastic episode. Her and I had never met each other, but like we take off right from the get-go as if we are like just two souls cut from the same cloth. Um, I also think that we missed an opportunity on the initial release of this episode to start the hashtag equal rights for female mice. Um, yes, female mice, equal rights for female mice mice. Uh, You'll understand in a minute. So without further ado, this is episode 48 and Dr. Beth Westy. I was like, this isn't a, you know, I want to know why this is happening. I didn't have this before. I have it now. Mm -hmm. What can I do? And there was no answer for me. So I went home and just started researching. I started diving into the history of nutrition, um, different research articles. I started diving into Eastern medicine and how Um, other countries deal with women's health. And in that, I found that, you know, and we're learning more and more about this, that like the history of healthcare is all set up for men. It's not set up for women. Studies are done on men. Studies are done on male mice. They don't even include female mice. So interesting. Yeah. Like there was even a 70 year aging study that was conducted over, you know, over like hundreds of thousands of participants in this aging study. All they're doing is studying how the human body ages. Guess how many women were a part of that study? How many? Zero? Zero. It sounds like Zero. bad science. Bad, exactly. Bad science. Is women it, are not included. Like you assume that it's the same? Yes. And it's the same for kids too. This is another reason I'm so passionate because when women, women are the drivers of healthcare in their own homes. And women are in charge of typically the healthcare of the kids. And it's the same for women and it's the same for kids. They don't test on kids. They take an adult dosage and they cut it in half and they call that equivalent for a kid dose. They test pharmaceuticals on men that are 140 pounds and they call that equivalent to a female body. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So think about there. I mean, there was, it wasn't even until 1993 that a law passed that women can even be allowed to be a part of pharmaceutical studies before that time. Women weren't allowed. So think of all the birth control, all the medication. Because they were worried that like they might jack up um, in their experiments. Like, Oh, they might not be able to have babies if we mess with them too much. Uh, No, it no. it was about money because women have a hormonal cycle. So it takes longer. Same thing for mice. It female mice go through a hormonal cycle. So it takes longer, like three times as long to collect accurate data on female mice versus male mice. Interesting. So it takes longer, which means it's more money. It costs more. Mm -hmm. It costs more to test on women than it does on men. So they just take men that are you know, smaller stature and think, oh, it's a female. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Right. Yep. So I, I dove into this, that there was more information on pharmaceuticals out there at first that I found, but then I started diving into like health practices, um, nutrition information, exercise recommendations. All of these things are researched on the male body. The nutrition label that's on any food product in the U S mm-hmm. is for a 44 year old healthy male. Oh, yeah. 
when okay. you go to the grocery store, do you yeah. see a lot of guys like looking at yeah, right. like, oh my God, <laughs> look yeah. at the percentage here, getting all of my magnesium. <laughs> all right. See? Yes. Isn't she awesome? The entire episode, it was just full of her, like, honestly, me just feeling like an idiot because I feel like I should know this stuff. I'm a doctor, damn it. Um, but I don't. And we've had a couple episodes like that. When I had um, Sarah Huhulis on pelvic floor, where I just feel like, how, how come I don't know any of this stuff? This seems like really not common sense, but like important, important information that as a female doctor who's um, client clientele patients that I s- s- serve is women. Like I should know this stuff. So awesome episode. Okay. So the next two clips are going to kind of go back to back. Um, they're both Kirby and I. Kirby is my husband. If you guys don't know that, um, yeah, he, I'm married to him and he edits the podcast. Um, and he is the man behind the magic the man behind no what's the wizard of oz thing um man behind the rope the cloth the wardrobe anyways um he pulls all the the triggers he is the great oz so the first one is episode 64 and this is where we had a question from um a woman who is like concerned that her husband's not going to want to go along with basically the way that chiropractors holistically raise children. So the entire episode is not about vaccines, um, but this clip you're going to hear first is on Kirby and I um, discussing, you know, um, I think that, I don't know, you'll hear me talking about how it was an easy decision, but it was also really hard. And um, maybe that's not everyone's experience. I mean, not all chiropractors don't vaccinate. So like, obviously it's not. And there's a lot of non-chiropractors who not vaccinate. So it was just our our kind of process as parents and the yeah, how we went through it. Um, and yeah, but that entire episode's not just about that. <laughs> because hello, I'm a people pleaser. If I did an entire episode about vaccines, you know I would just be worried about all my hate mail. So, huh. That's why you haven't had a She Slays the Day takes on that. No, the episode is about holistic parenting in general and all of the weird cloth diaper choices that, um, you know, we, we make as priorities of as being holistic parents. So enjoy episode 64. I knew without a shadow of a doubt before I was even pregnant that I would never vaccinate my kids. And we didn't, but I remember holding Charlie and she was like two or three days old and it was at like 2 a.m. And she, you know, just so peaceful and perfect. And I just wanted to cry because I wanted to do everything Mm -hmm. to protect her. And my... My brain knew the books. My brain knew the science. It knew the foundation of why I wasn't going to. But then I also was just terrified of like, but what if she does get that? Like, and so again, Mm -hmm. it was like that. I don't want to say it was a weak moment, but like, it's a humanizing moment of like parenting. You will just do anything and everything to protect them. Mm -hmm. And it can be really scary. I mean, and there's, there's the psychological aspect of you want, you want certainty, or at least you want the certainty of the group. And when someone offers you the certainty of the group of saying like, this is, this is what everyone's doing. Then if something bad happens, you can go like, well, I just did what everyone told me to. That doctor was very confident when he told me to do it. (laughs) People seek that out. And Mm -hmm. uh, as a society, we, in my opinion, vastly overvalue like strict confidence and certainty mm. that mm. people really want that. It's a thing that everyone wants to be and be around and like have in their life. But real life happens in the duality or in the non-duality of like sitting with some discomfort, being like, we're going to make this informed decision that we think is best and it may not be popular and it may be scary and you have those moments where you're holding your child and you want to do whatever you can. But it's really hard when the, 
strongest thing you can do is not do something because yeah. everyone wants to take action mm -hmm. because then you did something and you worked and you, yeah. you know, it, it's kind of like the American psyche of like, but I did a thing to try it. Like I did something and it's like, Ooh, but what if not doing mm -hmm. is, um, is very uncomfortable. Oh, so is I think. Okay, so next is also Kirby, and this is episode 68, and this is him and I talking about basically the episode is how to quit. If you're an associate, um, as an owner, our recommendation on how to approach this. Uh, there's a lot of information in the episode, um, you know, as far as like making sure you're following your contract, when to do it, what are the repercussions? So if you are an associate and you're thinking um, that you're going to be quitting in 2021 to either go to a new associate tip or start um, your own practice, I mean, congratulations. I feel bad for any doctors who are going to be losing their associates. But like ultimately my process in losing an associate was like it was such so obvious that it was perfect timing on both parts. Like it was so beautiful. Um, so at, at least my experience was being able to see that the timing was not what I would have chosen, but gorgeous for each of us. Um, and so anybody who is going to be losing an associate this year and you don't even know it yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Hindsight, you'll look back and hopefully they listen to this episode and um, quit a nice way. This is how I would want my future associate for this to play out and, you know, go through the feelings that I think it's a good empathy exercise of like, oh, I would be angry at them, like, you know, in this and like use a lot of that commute that this exercise because you're going to use that in how you communicate when you do get to that point that you're leaving. And keep in mind that there's kind of there's two selves, they say there's the experiencing self and the remembering self. So the experiencing self might be the one who goes like, I don't want to have that awkward conversation. I'll just wait until the last second. But the remembering self is the one that looks back and goes, how did I handle that? That has to live with your decisions for a long time after. And so I would say, listen and think more about what you're going to look back on yourself as mm -hmm. and go, did I handle this with my version of morals? Did I handle it with integrity? Because if you do something that in the moment is expedient, but long term is regretful. The regret doesn't go away, really. Yeah. So that's great. I didn't. I've never heard you say that before. You've just been keeping that little nugget to yourself, huh? I read it in a book. <laughs> that's true. You told me everything. You read in a book. Alrighty. So this next episode. This is episode sixty-seven, and this is like the whole thing was around getting your practice to see more kids. I go through multiple different points. I think I have like seven points or something like that. Um, and okay, a couple things on this clip that I just feel like I need to preface. One, it might sound kind of harsh if you don't know, if you haven't listened to many, many, many episodes of me. Um, I might come off like I don't like seeing Medicare patients. That's not true. I, I think I do a good job of kind of explaining it. But if you are looking to increase your percentage of one specific type of patient, whether you're looking to increase your percentage by more auto cases, it means you need to take time from somewhere to devote to that. And so you're kind of hearing me around laying down boundaries with what I think I use the phrase non-ideal patients. Oh, I don't, oh, maybe I don't use that phrase. Hopefully I don't, I don't mean it. You guys, there's a microphone in front of me and like shit just comes out of my mouth. So I do love, love, love my senior citizens um, and my non-pediatric patients. Um, but this is just around helping a doc see less of her non-ideal and more of her ideal. So this is episode 67. Oh, one last thing. Um, <laughs> also, if you're new to She Slays Today, so there's something called a colloquialism. I think it's also called an idiotism, an idiomism, something like that. <clears throat> and they're like the phrases of like sharpest tool in the shed. Um, something about a chicken in the hen house. There's a wolf in the hen. 
Wow. See, I, I'm not making this up. Um, so like, it's all those like phrases of like, you know, uh, and I start <laughs> this clip with like making up a new one. Um, I think it's burn the boat you're standing in. I don't know if that's a colloquialism, but again, feel free to use it if uh, it resonates with you. All right, episode 67, getting more kids in clinic. Don't burn the boat you're in. I'm totally making up this colloquialism as we go, just so you know. I'm. Uh, don't burn the boat you're standing in because you're looking at a different boat you want to jump to. Um, you guys can, all, you're all free to use that in your like, start using that lingo and that colloquialism. It's cool. Um, so what you can do is just start establishing better boundaries with the patients that aren't your ideal patient. So one of the things that I do with our Medicare patients, our 60 plus, is like, I believe in like chiropractic for all. Like if I have a Medicare patient seeking out non-pharmaceutical uh, relief. I'm all about that. But I lay down the law on day two of like, this is going to be my care plan three times a week for the next three months with what you have. And if they go like, well, can we just see how it goes? No, we can't because that's like, that is not doing you any favors. And that's not how our clinic works. But there's plenty of chiropractors who will do that. I'm just not one of them because it's not in your best interest. So right away, day two, they need to commit to whatever care plan I'm recommending the three times a week for however long. Then when we get to that end of that care plan, I cut them off. I go, okay, great. I'm so glad you got good results. You have two options. You can either continue to get great results and go down to wellness care, or you can be done now and call me in six months or a year or two years when it comes back and we'll go back to three times a week. Um, but let me talk to you about wellness and it's 40, you have to do like Medicare pricing, whatever, like 40. Oh, I don't know what the price is for a 98941. Um, we're in the weeds here of Cairo Lingo. Um, that would be a cool podcast. Cairo Lingo? Shit. Let's change the name. All right. Anyways. So, you know, I right in that moment, like if you want to keep coming, this is wellness care. Medicare doesn't pay for this. And like, and if they're like him and haw, I'm like, bye, Felicia. Although the over 65 crowd, it's more like, bye, Karen. Um, I should preface just for this episode, Dr. Betty, that I might come across as ageist and I'm not. I am totally not. I have said this before. You guys know that I'm just more of a Pete's Cairo and like I, like you, Dr. Betty, struggle with a lot of the pain focused mindset of, you know, the 50s, 60s plus crowd. Um, but I do know that like there's really great open minded um, senior citizens that like love coming to our clinic and love being around all the kids and all of that. So, you know, I would never go out of network with Medicare. Um, I just draw the line of like, if you want to come to this clinic, we are about like vitality. We are about caring about like your life. And, and you can incorporate this in your day one. And Honestly, if you are just here for a couple of cracks to get that hip done, I am going to annoy the crap out of you because I'm going to want to know, like, what are your goals? Do you want to play with your grandkids? How's your stress? How's your marriage? How's your sex life? How's your digestion? And if all of your answers back are going to be like, eh, what do you expect? You're not going to like it here. And we just let them know right away. Okay, have I gone over all my, yeah, laying down. Okay, great. Those are all my prefaces. Let's get into how you can start to attract that younger crowd. So one, and this is something that you're gonna can start doing right away with your current people, is stop talking about pain. Really take like, almost have a third party, this would be great, have a third party Cairo like examine you or even like your, your CA or whatever. Look at everything. Look at your forms. Look at your Facebook page. Look at your Facebook lives. What are your Google ads doing? Um, have somebody, like, have your CA listen in on your table talk. Um, what kind of modalities do you have in the clinic? Is everything, you know, is it x-ray and spinal decompression? And do you do a lot of stim and ultrasound and, like, 
you know, all of these things that are for pain? Are you, do you, is your swag ice packs? And I don't know, what's another pain? Biofreeze? Like, it's not that those things are bad. You can have them, but are they front and center? And do you have, like, if that's the kind of clinic that is front and center, is all of that pain, then you're going to attract pain. So you go, okay, well, what am I supposed to talk about if I'm not talking about pain? You want to switch that focus to talking about stress because stress can manifest as pain. We know this, emotional stress, physical stress, all of this can manifest as pain. But if you start talking about stress, then all of a sudden it opens up this entire age group that somehow magically doesn't really get pain because you know, the pain that's coming into your clinic, I had this realization early, not early on, not early enough on, that even though I was talking pediatrics, pediatrics, yeah, I was still a pain clinic. Let me tell you what was going on. I was getting obvious pain patients for pediatrics, i.e. colic, ear infections. Um, Those are like the main two. So as soon as the pain went away, so did the patient. So i.e., as soon as the colic went away, the mom went, oh my God, you fixed my child's pain. Thank you. Like, so really pay attention to like the ear infections and colic thing. If you're hitting those symptoms of like crying and like antibiotics, then as soon as that pain goes away. You're not really talking the stress to that patient. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing. You're just doing, talking pain to a younger population, thinking that you're doing the right thing. Instead, we want to talk about stress. We don't want to talk. Okay. This is the final episode of our two-part series of the best of 2020. And Dare I say, we absolutely saved the best for last. Um, I believe to date, minus the student loans episode, this is the most downloaded episode. Um, And it is Dr. Mo. So this is episode 35. Here's an important thing to remember here. This is uh, pre-COVID, okay? So (laughs) um, I haven't re-listened to the entire episode, but you're not going to hear anything about a pandemic. You're not going to hear anything about COVID or shutting down or anything like that because this is the only one of the eight clips that is pre-COVID. We are talking about meditation. If you don't know Dr. Mo... um, Holy cow, are you living under a rock? She's amazing. So Dr. Mo is actually married to Dr. Tamara, who was in clip one of part one, so last week's episode. Um, And she is talking about meditation and expanding your range of like feeling free in life. She is, they are absolutely amazing. Um, If you are interested, first of all, go back, listen to the entire episode again, because she just dropped so many bombs. She just kind of explodes my mind. Next time, I can't be trusted on an episode with just her, because one of my biggest things as a podcast host is I don't want to do too many like, oh my God, you just blew my mind. I don't know what to say next, because that's not helpful, right? But um, she's just in a different category than I am when it comes to like talking about spirituality and consciousness. And so kind of all she did all episode long was blow my mind. So next time what we're going to do, and um, I promise you this is going to happen in 2021, is I'm going to have Kirby and I and Dr. Mo and Dr. Tamara, and we're basically just going to do like a Friday night uh, Zoom date night because they live in Canada. So, you know, they're locked up there, you guys. You should be careful. Um, So, you know, we're just going to get a Zoom meeting going and pour some wine and uh, record it for you guys. So that's that's on the agenda for 2021. But this is Dr. Mo in episode number 35 talking about meditation. Enjoy. Got it. Okay. So when I meditate, so much of the goal is to get that constant 
thought trained to stop and just be, you know, like, so am I dulling and ignoring the consciousness or is that the observer calm state, the ultimate, ultimate consciousness? Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I do. (laughs) It's a great question. It's actually something that we teach on our retreats. And that is about that there's different states of consciousness. Now, a lot of people are, sorry, there's different types of meditation. There's different states of consciousness too. That's a whole other story. But what I wanted to say is that there's different kinds of meditation. And a lot of people have, they have this misperception that you're supposed to sit in a corner and not think and levitate. (laughs) Um, I'm going to tell you this, guess what? It's it's impossible to not think because that's your brain's job. The real purpose of meditation, and there's a lot of different ways to do that, whether it's, you know, through chanting, through mindfulness meditation, through Zen, through staring at a candle, guided meditations. The real purpose of meditation is to expand the range of experiences in which we feel free. People talk about, yeah, just... Write that one down and let yeah. that sink in. I'll My say it again. Exploded. I'll say it again. And yeah. The purpose of meditation is to expand the range of experiences in which, we'll feel, which we feel free. Now, people have this idea of financial freedom or that freedom means you have lots of time. I would actually argue that the only source of true suffering that any human experiences comes from the conscious mind. It's from these stories that we tell ourselves. The purpose of meditation is to take you out of that running stream of consciousness. I'll tell you this, if you're starting out as a new meditator and you sit down and you think, I'm not going to (laughs) think. Wrong. The brain's job is to think. So find a good teacher that as as somebody is getting into meditation, like where do they start? You listed a bunch of different ones. Is there better ones. Yeah. I mean, I would reach out to people. If you have mentors that know or understand the purpose, the process of meditation, you know, there's classes, there's a meditation center just opened up here in Victoria. It's awesome. Sometimes meditation happens in the form of prayer. You know, I remember going to church on Sundays and just being like, I always left there feeling so peaceful. Mm -hmm. Meditation is different for some people. Meditation is for my wife, it's on a bicycle, like grinding up a hill for an hour. Well, I was going to ask because um, runner's high is, yeah. I'm a long distance runner and runner's high is um, one of the best forms. But I'm like, am I allowed to say that I'm meditating while running and trying not to get bitten? You're by allowed to say whatever you want, okay. Lauren. Do you know you what? Know what? <laughs> if you go into an altered state of consciousness, you are freeing the mind. And I think that's possible with something like a runner's high. And just so typical, typical of our society to take something whose purpose is to expand and give more freedom and try and put like so many labels around like, yeah. am I doing it right? And it's like, no, you're doing it wrong because you're asking if you're doing it right. That's yeah. the only you, part of this that's wrong. You know what? You can't, there's not wrong ways, but maybe there's better ways. And um, I recommend... You're spoken like a great teacher. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you are. You suck at this. Get better. And you're like, well, there's ways to be better. I would maybe recommend for the pure novice um getting an app called insight timer and maybe starting with some guided meditation or chanting and then the other piece is really to create a daily practice and if you can you know commit to and why i always say at least get to double digits commit to 11 minutes a day and create a ritual around that where maybe you find a sacred space you light a candle Maybe read a passage. It could be from the Bible. For me, I read usually some sort of Buddhist transcript. And often I read Pema Chodron, who I love, love, love. It's been a mentor of mine for about 30 years. I've been studying Pema Chodron. And um, yeah, make a sacred ritual around it and make that commitment to self. And, and, And I think if you can make a daily practice at least one time a day of at least 11 minutes, um, you're on the way. Okay, you beautiful souls. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me, um, remembering some of the greatest episodes 
and moments of this podcasting thing called She Slays the Day, I love you. I love you so much. Thank you for listening. I love every single one of our guests. Um, They are picked and chosen because um, basically the universe will bring them to me or I will find them or you will send them to me. And like, I love that we talk about anything on this podcast because you're listening, you're a chiropractor or an entrepreneur or a mother, and we're all going through a lot of the similar experiences in life. And I I know that we're all dealing with similar things, but maybe at different times and weathering the storm together. And I just, I'm so grateful for the, um, this time we have together. So that was part two of the best of 2020. I can't wait, although I can totally wait, um, to fast forward to 2022 when we are releasing the best of 2021. Um, I think that we need Kirby to start recording all of my stupid colloquially colloquialisms so we can just have like a five minute rampage of Lauren rambling off the wrong, um, the wrong phrase and laughing at my ludiocracy. Okay. Have a great week, everyone. I will see you next week. Bye, She Slayers. Mm-hmm.